Now we go on to our next topic. We are in chapter four of the draft notes. This is vectors. This is a mathematical tool that we shall use a lot in this course. Okay. What is a vector? Some of you maybe never heard of vectors, but this is not something complicated. Well, we start with how to find a point. Well, we will discuss how things move, where they are. So if I have a little object at this point here, I want an address for this object. Where is it? Okay. And we live in a three-dimensional space. So the way to do this is to give three numbers, three coordinates. How is that done? We must define a coordinate frame. We must define, draw some lines, some axes, three lines perpendicular to each other. You can call them anything you want, but usually we call them X, Y, Z. Okay? As I've drawn there. Then, I give the coordinates of this point. For example, the coordinates of this point might be okay, 3, 5, and so, let's see. What does that mean? It means you have your origin starting point at the intersection of your x, y, z axis. That is the reference point to find all addresses. That is your zero point. Start from the zero point. Go three steps. If you are using meters, three meters, <coughs> along the x direction. Then go, I said five, right? Go five meters in the y direction. And then z was seven. Go up seven meters in the z direction. That's the unique address. You will get just one point if you do this. So this point in space, with respect to this set of coordinate axes, has the address 357. Okay? That's very familiar. Okay. Can everybody hear me now? Okay. So, just three numbers are enough, are required, to give the precise way of finding any point. Provided you have or you know what reference frame you are talking about. Just like when you give somebody an address, you know, you go along such and such a street, so many meters, and then turn off into such and such another street, y-axis, go so many meters, and then fly, okay, along the z-axis, so many meters, and land on somebody's fifth floor, okay. Uh, same thing. But to do this, you must know where these streets start, where is the origin. Now the point physically in space is the same point. But if I now use a different rotation, uh, different uh, frame, if I just change my axis, now this is my x, this is my y, this is my z. The point is the same point, the particle is still sitting here, but the numbers will not be 3, 5, 7, they will be maybe minus 1, 10, and 23. So the actual numbers depend on, of course, how you choose your coordinates. But once you choose your coordinates, you know that x, y, z are measured from this point, along this direction, that direction, that direction, then the address is definite. Okay? This is a vector. A vector is nothing else but just a set of three numbers, the address of a point. 
Ok. So basically, there is nothing fancy, nothing complicated about a vector. Comp it's just coordinates. If you are talking about motion in the plane in two dimensions, then you have two numbers in your address. So that's a vector. X, Y is a vector. In three dimensions, X, Y, Z, address of a point is a vector. Notation. You just give a name to your vector. For example, I here called it P for point, okay? To note that this is a vector, it really involves three coordinates, you put an arrow on top, okay? So if you write something without an arrow, it just means just one, one number, one ordinary number. If you write something with an arrow, it means it really has two or three, you know, depending on your system, numbers underlying it. And the arrow actually means something more than that. We know that coordinates, in reference to an origin, give you an address, tell you how to get from that origin to this point. So you are getting from somewhere to somewhere. If you give three numbers plus you know what system of coordinates those numbers refer to, then that's equivalent to the precise way of getting from the zero point to that point. So that's directions and address, just like when you give somebody an address to go to your apartment. Okay? So that's what arrow means. Whenever you are giving three numbers, two numbers, that's an address. And it refers to an origin, so it gets you from that origin to this point, so you put an arrow. Is this clear? So vector is, a, is more than a number because it has, a, it, has two, it has two or three numbers or maybe more numbers, depends on what you are talking about. Uh, it's a richer thing than an ordinary number. And to get to that set of coordinates from the origin of your coordinates means there's a direction. So it's... It's a quantity with a direction, okay? Now, this is also a vector. Here is a two-dimensional situation. X, Y plane. And here is your point P there. Okay? Well, let me use black. Here is our origin, here is our origin, okay? This is in two dimensions. What about in one dimension? Do you think we can have vectors in one dimension? One dimension means your address is on a, on a straight line, just one street exists. Okay? What's the vector now? What do you think? There is a zero, okay, so I have one street. The whole world of addresses is just one street, and in the middle of the street is a big square, okay? And that's your zero point. Now, along that street, either way are some addresses, some coordinates. How many numbers are needed now? Just one number. Okay? Is it a vector, the coordinate? In one dimensions, do you understand the question? Yeah, I understand, but I don't think so. It's a, 
You, you don't think it's effective? Both, uh, doesn't have a direction. Okay, but that's the question, okay. First you, have, you, you say, okay, it's the vector. Then you say, does it have a direction? That's the right way to go. But uh, are you right to say that there is no direction in one dimension? Okay, you are in the middle of the street. There's, here there's a big square. Okay, and there are, there's a street going this way and a street going that way. This street called, is called the plus street and this street is called the minus street. And your friend says, I live in number three. You ask, which side, on this side or that side? So there is a direction. Because even in one dimension, once you put the origin, there is plus and there is minus. And that is direction. Okay? So there is such a thing as a one dimensional vector. It's just the situation, the coordinate of a point on a line. Somewhere on the line you put an origin. To the left is minus numbers, to the right is plus numbers. It's just a real line. Okay? So just one number, which is a coordinate, is a vector. It is still different from an ordinary number. How is it different? It has a sign. I'm sorry. A number that shows you a coordinate along a, in a one-dimensional situation, just a line, is a vector, even though it's just one number. Okay? Because it is a plus or minus sign which tells you which way to go. So essentially, a vector is a directed line, geometrically, which way, okay? And algebraically, it's just a set of numbers. It can be one number, two numbers, three numbers, with plus or minus signs. Also in three dimensions. I gave the example three, five, seven, but some of those numbers could be negative numbers. I could give you the minus three, you know, go along the x-axis in this direction. And then minus five, sorry, this way, along the y-axis, and then plus seven, you know, that's a different Thing. So all of these coordinates can have plus or minus signs, even in one direction. So it's always directed. It's a set of numbers that use the coordinate of a point. That's what a vector is, okay? Now I talked about direction. <coughs> and I define the vector as how to get to your point. Uh, before I go on, let me just finish the one-dimensional case also. Here is plus, here this way is minus, okay? So if I put my point here, P, and the coordinate is just X, this is again a vector. So it's a vector, all right? Now, since we realize that a vector involves direction, an address how to get there. I can write it in a different way. I now make a definition.
Now I kept telling you a vector is just an address if a point has coordinates x, y, z you see it's a vector because that tells you to go from the origin to that x, y, z point okay? you go along the x axis 3 units, y axis, 5 units, z axis, 7 units and you get there so to cut it short I can write it another way I can make a definition exactly I say well x, y, z means know your origin start from the origin go in the x direction so the words go along the x direction I make into a mathematical definition shorthand I okay I call it I going along the x direction just by one unit so this is my definition of coordinates if the coordinate is 3, 5, 7 coordinates are 3, 5, 7 I go along the x direction by 3 units Okay. then I go along the y direction by 5 units and z direction by 7 units so all of these words to save myself saying all these words I make use of mathematics as a language I make a precise definition instead of saying go along the x direction by so many units etc but going along the x direction by 1 unit I call it i so I say go along the x direction x units that's x times r and add to that another displacement another moving along okay etc so in red I am defining going along the x axis along which side of the x axis plus or minus the plus side okay going along the plus side by one unit is i so 3 is go along it 3 units so I write this 3i ok green is the same words except go along the plus y axis and blue is in the plus z axis ok I didn't write the words again but everybody gets this prescription so if x, y, z is an address and I can tell an address by go this way that way etc this way that way I define as a shortcut i, j, k ok now i, j and k themselves are vectors why? because it says go one unit along the plus x axis it tells me to get to some point what point is that? now here's a question to you I is the point I get to when I go along just the x-axis by one unit and stop so what are the coordinates of that point what is the x-coordinate 1 I just started from 0 and 1 unit okay. then I don't go anywhere along the y or z-axis so the y-coordinate and z-coordinate of I are zero does everybody get this? this is the vector i now can you tell me what the vector j is? 0, 1, 0 don't go along the x-axis 0 go one step along the y-axis 1 and 0 for z ok so these i, j, k are the most simple kind of vectors and notice that I put this hat on the eye, this sign instead of the arrow that means a unit vector
okay? In books, in print, sometimes you see arrows for vectors, and sometimes, like we do in this course, you just print the vector symbol in bold face. Kalın fontla, kara fontla basıyorsunuz. Kitapta zaten yazıyor. So in some books it's indicated by an arrow or a hat. In other books like our book, you just print in black, dark, bold face. Okay? That means a vector. And IJK is just IJK. In bold face. If you see an I in bold face, it means a unit vector. Okay? Now, if I get to this point, 3, 5, 7, you can ask that, how far am I from the origin? Okay. How do you calculate this? The magnitude. Well, I came along the x-axis three steps and y-axis five steps, so I first came to this point. Okay. Does anybody remember how to find How to find this length? Hmm? If this is 3 and this is 5, what is this? How do I find it? Right? What is it? Yeah, I hear something. Square, okay. Louder. 3 squared plus 5 squared, okay. You add the squares, take the square root. That gives me where I am. Now I go up again. So I have 3 squared plus 5 squared plus, so this length squared plus that length squared, which is 7. Okay? So here's the length I want. Okay, and this is a unit, of course, in this case, it's meters. All right? Does everybody understand this? So every vector also has a magnitude, a length. What is the total length of your line? Is this clear? Yes? Okay. Notation.
When I talk about the length or magnitude of a vector, <coughs> I don't use an arrow. I can also write it as between two vertical lines reading absolute value of the vector vectorun mutlak değeri which means its magnitude okay short instead of writing you know put an arrow and then put lines don't put the arrow at all or in the book no bold face same symbol okay that means the length of the vector okay Now a question for you. I'm in three-dimensional space, and I have this point P at distance of square root of 83 meters from the origin. Are there other points which have the same distance from the origin? Yes. How many? Infinite. Where are they? Which points? Okay. Here is my point, three, five, seven. This point has the same length from the origin. This point has the same length. All of these points have the same length. This is the surface of a sphere. Okay. In three dimensions, each point has a different address. They are all different, and that's why we need vectors to define their specific directions. But if you just talk about magnitude, you know, which addresses have the same distance from taxi? Okay? There are lots of them. In, if I was doing it two dimensions, how many points are there at the same distance? Hmm? In two dimensions, which points have the same distance from from the center. Well, this point, this point, this point, this point, they all have the same distance from the center. So that is describing a circle in two dimensions. So again, there's an infinite number of them. Okay? And which one, to distinguish which, you must give it as a vector. One dimension, straight line, here is the origin. Here is my point, 4.5 plus. How many other points have the same distance? The address at minus 4.5. Two. So here's the funny thing. In one dimension, you have direction, but you only have two directions. So there are only two points at the same distance. As soon as you go to two dimensions, there's an infinite number of points at the same distance. Change dimension, you go from two to infinity, and to a bigger infinity if you go to three dimensions. Okay? But even in one dimension, because there are two different points with the same distance, you need vectors. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Now, please, if, especially if vectors are fresh to you or you have forgotten, it's very simple at this point, but do read it and do the problems. I will assign problems today to make sure that you get vectors straight. On Monday, I will finish the subject of vectors. <laughs>